Shalom everyone, Shalom people of God. I go by the name Ruben Mike, I'm also known as Ruby MC. Well, if you are joining us for the very first time, you are welcome to my channel. Please go below this video and click on the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell to get notified whenever we post a new video. Keep your phone on the landscape mode. Don't forget to use an earpiece for the best experience. Get ready to get down to today's video. Let's go! So today, the video I'm going to be doing today is going to be a really, really big shocker. And I'm going to be saying a lot of controversial things based on... Um, a video that was sent to me by a minister friend of mine concerning some things that Pastor Moses Alu said in his church. A lot of people have been asking to hear my views concerning it and they wanted me to do a video concerning it. So this was not actually the video I wanted to do next but because of the controversial things that Pastor Moses Alu said, I would love to air my views concerning them so that those who the Lord wants to open their eyes will have their eyes opened and a lot of people will get light from the things I'm about to say in this video. So, if you are a diehard follower of Pastor Moses Alu, please, I love you to join me with an open mind as I'll be analyzing everything he said in that video one after the other and I'll be drawing a conclusion. And don't go nowhere because at the end of this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a dark secret, a very hidden information concerning Pastor Moses Alu that happened recently and I think you don't want to miss it. So, let's go. I said this with all passion because some, I was reading through some of my sermon notes that I preached five, seven years ago and I was laughing at myself. You mean you preach this? So two things are involved. It's either Pastor Moses Alu is saying that he has advanced in knowledge or that he has backslided. Apostasy is no longer believing what he preached. He himself preached seven years ago. So if seven years ago this man made a mistake in what he preached, how are we sure? Seven years ago when the man was hungry. Seven years ago when the man was eager, powerful, strong in the word of God. He is now now that he now has money. He's now rich and he has not been mixing with denominational preachers. That's when he has now advanced in light. Let's let's watch more. Let's listen to him more and know what he really means. I was so ashamed. I had to tell Brad TV. I said, please remove those sermons. So that people will not be misled. I'm confused. Now, that further light has been given. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, I said this. It has cost me friends. It has given me names by the people I belong to before, like Apostle Paul with the Pharisees and Sadducees. <laughs> this man is a comedian. So now he claims that he more light has now been given. He has now grown in knowledge. So now he is now Apostle Paul and the people that believe what he preached seven years ago when he was fresh out of prison, when he was uh, on fire for the Lord, now those ones are now Pharisees and Sadducees. Why well, he is now the Paul. He now that is mixing with denominational preachers, he now that has gone back to his vomit, is now the light has now come back. And let me not let me not talk much. <laughs> let me allow him. Let me allow him clear himself. Let's know what he's about to say before I run to my conclusion. And when I say these things, I am saying it, and I'm telling you, come and challenge me. Bring your Bible and challenge me. Enter message, pastors. There is nowhere in the Bible that promised the Gentiles a dispensational prophet. As much as what this man said here wants to sound as if it's the truth. I must tell you that it is a big lie. There may not have been a straight verse in the Bible that tells us that there is a prophet that is going to be sent to the Gentiles, but by the revelation of the word of God, we know that the Bible actually said that there is a prophet that is going to come to the Gentiles, which is the Malachi 4 that he's trying to rubbish. The Bible spoke about John the Baptist coming. The Bible spoke about Elijah coming. It says Elijah coming to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and to the, from the children to the fathers. And the Bible basically said that what John the Baptist did was only to turn the heart of the fathers to the children, which is the Pharisees of those days, to the children which were the apostles, the disciples of those days. It got to the point that Pharisees were coming to come and meet children to hear the word of God from them, like Nicodemus coming to meet Jesus. Now that Elijah ministry ended with John the Baptist. But Malachi prophesied of two Elijahs. Malachi prophesied of a, a, an Elijah, a prophet to the Jews and a prophet to the Gentiles. Elijah coming to the Jews and coming to the Gentiles. It was actually three Elijahs. One to the Jews, John the Baptist. 
one to the Gentiles, and then again another one to the Jews. But you may not want to, you may not want to agree to this. That's the reason why he's saying all what he's saying. But I must let you know that everything that happened to Israel also happened to the Gentiles. When Jesus Christ came, he said, I came for the lost sheep of Israel. So Jesus Christ did, we all know that the Israelites did not accept Jesus Christ. Then Jesus Christ now said that this gospel, the kingdom of God, shall be taken from you, Israel, and given to another nation. And that is going to be done by a ministry. Because if God is going to take the gospel from the Jews and take it to the Gentiles, you have to do it through a prophetic ministry. Amos chapter 3, verse 7, Amos said that God will do nothing but reveal his secret to the servant, his prophet. See, the Lord will do nothing. So everything that the Lord does, he does it by a prophetic ministry. And Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, said that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So God does what he does with a prophet. And now Paul made it clear in Colossians chapter 1, verse 25, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17, Paul said boldly that a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto him. And Paul also said in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verse 8, Paul said that uh, Peter was sent as an apostle to the Jews, while he was sent as an apostle to the Gentiles. And when Jesus Christ was talking about the seven church ages, the first church age was the age of Ephesus. And each of these ages, a star messenger was assigned to them, and a star messenger is a prophet. What is this man saying? These are things that he believed before and now because of denomination and money, this man has backslided. Now he's saying there was no dispensation. Paul used dispensation in these four scriptures I quoted. Colossians 1.25, Ephesians 3 verse 2, Ephesians 1 verse 10, 1 Corinthians 9.17. A, 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 a dispensation means an allocation, a division, an apportionment, a duration of time. Even Jesus said it. The first church age is Ephesus. The first church age is a period of time. And it was given to Paul. But now he's saying that there's no, there's no dispensation promised to Gentiles. No prophets promised to Gentiles. That is a blatant lie. Malachi 4, 5 and 6 is not for the Gentiles. Will you keep quiet? Revelation 10, 7 is not for the Gentiles. Ah! You think they are wise? Oh, I'm not too much. And I'll show you this by the scriptures. How can this man say that Revelation chapter 10 verse 7 is not to the Gentiles? Is Moses Alu still a Christian at all? The angel that appeared in Revelation chapter 10 verse 7, which had, which had one feet on the land and the other one on the sea, what was he about to do? Is he not rapture? Was rapture promised to the Jews? Is rapture not promised to the Gentiles? Is it not after rapture takes place that the gospel will now end, the dispensation of the gospel of the Gentiles will now be ended and it will move down to the Jews? Now, the mysteries of redemption that the seven thunder contains, when the Bible was saying in Revelation chapter 10 verse 7 that in the days of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound, the mysteries of God should be finished as he has revealed unto his servants the prophets. Is it not first to the Gentiles? And after rapture, Moses and Elijah, who are also prophets of God, will come and take it to the Jews? What is this man saying? The problem with these people is that they don't know what the seventh thunder says. That's why uh, Moses Alu can be saying that he's preaching the latter rain, whereas he doesn't know what the latter rain says. The message of the seven thunders has been revealed by God's prophet. William Branham gave his part, New Frisbee is giving his part now and he says the remaining part is to the bride and New Frisbee is not sent to the Jews, New Frisbee is sent to the bride and the bride are Gentiles. So what is Modisalu saying? Because Modisalu does not know where to go, he does not know how to move, he knows that the message is supposed to be furthered, he does not know how to further it, he's not saying nonsense. Now he's calling end time uh, pastors to come and do a competition with him. Is that how the gospel is being, is being established? Is that how to preach the gospel? To begin to come out on live television to come and do competition? Even if Moses Allah wants to do a biblical debate with another preacher, is it on his own bright TV, on his own church channel? He will not be doing a debate so that he will win, so that his own people will be applauding him. What sort of nonsense is this? Okay, if at all an end time pastor should come on live TV to come and have a competition with him, and he wins. Does that really mean that is the truth? What happened at the Nicene Council when some group of people were challenging other people about who God is? Some say God is three, some say God is one. And at the end, the people that say God is three were the ones that won. Up to today, we know that those ones that won were not the ones saying the truth. Is the word of God won by debate? Has Moses Allah lost his mind? Then so those of you that are following him, have you also lost your mind too? You want to follow Moses Allah to hell? Let me let you in if I tell people what I want to say. 
Why they no go verse? Did you just say they no know say nonsense? Now you did talk. Let me teach you before. Let me teach you. Why don't you want to move with me? They are to move with God, not with you. If they continue moving with you, they will end up in the great tribulation. And point of correction, God is their teacher, not you. I'm the one that taught you. There's one at uh, Ejibo that I brought from uh, one Agbero. Look at a so-called man of God calling another preacher Agbero. Look at a so-called person that says he has received light and is calling another preacher Agbero. Through me, God got him converted. I even became an evangelist here. He left there and is there challenging, uh, abusing me in his pulpit that uh, I have left the message. Yes, I have left the manner for yesterday. I am in the manner for today. This man thinks that people that listen to him are fools or they are babies. If you have left yesterday's manner, you are in today's manner. According to Bible standard from Genesis to Revelation, is God not a God of continuation? Is the pillar of fire not a continuing pillar of fire? Did Joshua not preach what Moses preached? Did Elisha not do what Elijah did? Did Jesus not preach repentance like John the Baptist did? Did John not preach the same thing? John, Paul and Peter, were they not doing the same thing? Don't, this, is, don't we have one Holy Ghost? Is Jesus Christ no longer the same yesterday, today and forever? So you rubbish the same thing you preached yesterday. How are we sure you are not going to come tomorrow and come and rubbish what you are saying today? You confused preacher that don't know your left from right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wrote him, I said, can we meet? You say, I'm in error. Bring your Bible. Let's meet anyway. In fact, let's go to Brad Television live. And, and then you show me. He didn't reply me. You know you know nothing about the gospel of salvation. You know. The gospel is more than don't wear trousers, don't wear earrings. Women pastor is not allowed. Water baptism in the name of Jesus. Pope is antichrist. Denomination is of the devil. That is not the message, oh. How can this man say that that is not the message? Eh? So if you bring a new person into the message, don't you feed them with the basics? Women preaching are wrong. Baptism is done in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, speaking in tongues in the church is false without an interpreter. Don't you give them the basics? So because you, he feels that he knows the advanced part, that now makes him to begin to ridicule the basics. Okay, we know that Pope is not the Antichrist because we now that we receive the Frisbee's message, we know better that Pope is not the Antichrist. But does that mean that people that are, don't you know that the Antichrist is going to usurp the authority of the Pope? See, I think I've had enough. I've had enough. When I even got this video, I was so angry and so vexed in my spirit. I had to, I had to drop what I wanted to do, the video I was planning to do and do this video immediately because I felt like this man is causing serious harm to the body of Christ. Look. If you want to get the full video, I'm going to be dropping my WhatsApp contact under my business WhatsApp contact under this uh, YouTube video in the description. Once you go there, click on the WhatsApp number, chat me up. I'm going to be giving you the full video so you hear from him. Now Moses Alu is now contradicting all what he has preached before. He's now he has turned to something else. I even did a video which, which is also in the description of this video where he was saying that Judas Iscariot is in heaven. He's now saying that uh, the serpent never never had any kind of knowledge with Eve, that Cain is not the son of the serpent, and a lot of other things. But that's not really really the major thing I want to say. I, I promised you people from the beginning of this video that I was going to be giving you a dark secret about him. There's a prophet I know, a very dynamic prophet from Enugu that came to visit Lagos recently. When the prophet came to Lagos, he said that God told him to go and warn Pastor Moses Alo about the false doctrine he's preaching and about the, 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 the harm that he has done to his members, the way he has begun to compromise and begin to join forces with the government and join forces with false preacher. But Moses Alu that used to be against uh, Lazarus Moka before and a lot of denominational preachers, now he's going in line with them, now he's rubbing shoulders with them, he's not relating with them, that's why he can now turn and begin to bite the hands that fed him. That's why he cannot turn and begin to contradict the word of God, the true message that he came out from. Because now he has now returned back to his vomit. So, but when this prophet was went to uh, Moses Alu's place, they refused him access to Moses Alu. And the PA that was there was started threatening the prophet's life, raining all manner of curses on him, attacking him. Then there's also been a news of Pastor Moses Alu taking one of his, his members to court and sentencing the guy to jail. How can someone be, be listening to a preacher like that? Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. If a preacher cannot change his own life, how can he change your own? I know a lot of people want to come out and attack me and say I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But you sit back and think about this. Did Paul not warn us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6? 
If he claims that there is no prophet to the Gentiles, the Paul not say in the book of Romans that his gospel, God is going to judge the Gentiles according to his gospel. Okay, if he doesn't believe that Paul is a prophet to the Gentiles, though he, I know he must believe because the Bible says that we are going to be judged by Paul's message. And Paul said we should not take our matters to unbelievers. And he, he carried his own member to court and sentenced the guy to jail. Make sure he took the guy to jail. How can such a man not climb the altar and be preaching? What nonsense is he preaching? And if he, if he has given, if he, if he has put a lot of people in, under his spell, they should understand that the word of God is above every preacher. But it's left to you to decide. I've, I've, I've said what, I've, what I have to say. The light has been, has been shined out. Those that will receive it will receive it. Those that won't receive it will not receive it. I mean, I don't care. I don't do anything I want to do. So, um, for those of you that love what I'm doing, God bless you. And if you have anything to say, please come to the comment section. I welcome any kind of comment. Say whatever you have to say. Please subscribe to my video and see you some other time. God bless you. And thanks for watching to the end.